Good afternoon, my friends. I wanted to have a chat with you today about something, about an email that I received from a subscriber that I think is kind of an interesting topic and I'm going to get started on it as soon as I come back. Hey! Roger. Oh, Roger. Hello there. Hello there. I want to read this email, okay? Now, it's a little bit long, so bear with me, okay? I, I know it's, there's going to be nothing more boring than listen to somebody read a page and a half email, but it's a good topic, and I think, well, just listen to it, okay? If you don't want to listen to it, um, hit the stop button on your remote and go have a beer or something, okay? And wait for the next video but, it, but anyway here it is Mr. Shader or Don if I may uh, yeah I prefer Mr. Shader just just kidding okay I'm just kidding folks Don, Don, Don is fine don't ever call me Mr. Shader that my dad was Mr. Shader I am Don I have a question for you one which I have not seen addressed in your body of work and I hope you will find the time to consider as a subscriber I have watched many of your videos probably most of them, and I take value from the commentary and the topics you cover. You provide useful information while at the same time coming across as a real person. This is most uncommon. I agree. I, I try my best to be just as natural as I am and not uh, no Hollywood fluff on this channel. Even as you clearly know your stuff when it comes to video editing, your productions are never so slick that you don't seem genuine and authentic, and this counts for a lot. Like other expats on YouTube, you focus rightly on the key areas of concern for anyone who contemplates a move to another country. These include visas, legal requirements, housing, health care, cost of living management and finances, water quality, internet connectivity, crime, climate, language, transportation, access to goods and services, and so on. And he's right. I try to cover all of that on this channel but once all of these check boxes have been ticked how would you characterize your level of satisfaction with daily life in Ecuador that's a good question folks how would you like how would you characterize your level of satisfaction with daily life in Ecuador I'm going to answer that question here in a minute as you go about considering this question imagine that in regard to the criteria above the United States has been on a par with Ecuador all along. Imagine that on these big issues, any differences between the two countries would be negligible. Next video about the daily life in Ecuador as compared to the U.S. If this were the case, how would ordinary life in Ecuador stack up with life in your former home country? Once the dust settles and the newness of the move wears off, is the initial enthusiasm and excitement likely to wane a bit? Boy, howdy. Remember, I, I talked once in that video about the honeymoon period, getting through the honeymoon period. If so, this is not to say any decision to move would be mistaken, not at all. To immerse yourself, oneself in a new culture is life-enriching in a way that it changes us for the better. Still, once this transition is largely behind you, and the flurry of new activities as well, I would love to know if the nuts and bolts of the average day in Ecuador are somewhat anticlimactic. I pose these questions because you are one who puts your cards on the table. No country is perfect, and to your credit, you speak of both the good and bad, albeit from your own perspective, and this distinguishes you from other, some others on YouTube. I first traveled to Ecuador in 2014 and I now plan to relocate there. And against that backdrop, I just wonder, now that you have made the adjustments to your new daily adopted country, your new adopt, newly adopted country, whether your life day to day is, in your view, not all that different from what it would have been had you remained in the United States. If it is still quite different, even once we get past the big differences of country and culture, I'm sure I and others would love to hear about it. Okay, I'm not going to mention his name. He is a subscriber that wrote that. Uh, 
let's just say, I'll give him a name of Jeff, just because that's just the first thing that comes to mind. So Jeff, yeah, you know, I've been here 15 months, and uh, it's been quite an adventure. I've had major illnesses since I've been here that I never had in the United States. I've had a knife pulled on me by somebody that wanted to rob me. I had somebody get within my space on my way down to the mall one morning that even though it wasn't, you know, written out on a blackboard and placed right in front of me, uh, that he was there to cause trouble with me, I sensed it and I knew this guy was wanted to start something with me, probably rob me. And the only thing that saved me was the fact that I had my my pepper spray in my hand. And I made sure he saw it. I shook it and I made sure he saw it. I knew my instinct told me that this is trouble. And we were in the perfect location for it. He could have easily sucker punched me and he would have had anything he wanted. But, and then I've had to deal with extreme boredom. I've had to deal with some some relationships with people that didn't quite work out, all expats. I've tried to be of some service to uh, everybody that comes here from the States and from Canada and wherever that follow me on my channel. I'll try to be of some service to all these people and to some, most of them accept it with, they accept it wholeheartedly and and then some get offended when I try to give them advice about being smart, being street smart, especially here in Monta, and how to not get robbed and not be taken advantage of. I've had this one guy tell me basically to mind my own business and shake the dust off my feet, and we are no longer friends. But to say, you know, to compare my daily life here to my daily life in the States, I, I got to say I miss the United States. I miss living back home. But there is so much that I miss that some days, even after 15 months, I still ask myself, question myself, what the hell am I doing here? I know that when I made the decision to retire that I wanted to leave the United States and travel throughout the world and experiment with different destinations. I wanted to come to Ecuador first because of the research that I did and the answers that I found that I was looking for to get my dental work done and to uh, have a place that was affordable to live and I could live on my retirement. And so that's how I ended up here in Monta. I, there's things that I miss back home. I miss my routine, that I have a very much a routine kind of guy. I miss my Friday night visits to Carabas for drinks and dinner. I miss my favorite little family cafe that I used to go to breakfast at quite a bit. I miss just hopping on my motorcycle and going for a ride. You know, I miss my toys. I miss uh, my car. I miss getting in my car and going out and loading up all my photography gear and going out and go to the desert. I remember Thanksgiving Day three years ago, I went, everybody else went to Thanksgiving dinner. I went to, uh, I loaded up all my gear and went out to the desert and did photography all day long. And I got a picture that, well, I took this picture. Here's this picture here of this cactus plant. This was my Thanksgiving Day three years ago. You know, and this gave me something to work on and I was happy with it and I was in my element. I, I don't have that freedom here. I, I don't feel safe. I, and one person, I don't have a car. I don't have a motorcycle. And I know a lot of people are going to go back and say, come on, Don, go get one, you know. Well, I'm working on that, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on getting my driver's license and getting a car here so that I can get out of this apartment that I'm a prisoner in every day. I go to the mall in the mornings and eat breakfast and then I come home and stare at this computer or watch TV or take a nap. Lately, I seem to be taking a lot of naps. 
and I have a phone call coming in. I'll be right back. I am back. I got a phone call from a friend of mine, and if I had time at the end of this little video here, I'm going to tell you something else. But anyway, you know, we... There, there, there is a, there is a lot that when you, as an expat, when you move here, you're, I'm, I'm telling you, folks, you're, you're going to get homesick. You're, if you don't, I think you got a screw loose somewhere. You know, there. If you come here with super high expectations, uh, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, it's, it's not really. Ecuador is not for everybody. And Monta is not for everybody. Monta is a good place to come and retire and maybe go hang out on the beach, go fishing, go boating, you know, go explore, go to the rainforest. There's beaches all over the place. You know, but that, that may not be for everybody. I mean, I'm not a beach person. I don't go out on the beach. I, I, there's something on the beach that I'm allergic to and it gets into my legs and I get a bad bacterial infection on my legs. So I don't go to the beach, you know. <clears throat> so, but there's other places to, to, to live here in Ecuador and that's one of the reasons why I want to get a car because I want to go explore and, and I want to get out and, and provide more, you know, good travel content and show you, my audience, what Ecuador is really like, you know, but, you know, day-to-day -day life, to be honest with you, right now, uh, I'm bored, and I, I have to really, I have to make things to do, I have to make up things to do, and of course, I just got over having COVID, and I was sick for two weeks, and still not 100%, but I'm better than I was two weeks ago. And I tried to stay busy with this channel and I tried to create content that's of some use to somebody. Even though sometimes it's not always 100% accurate. I make mistakes, you know, like I did on the, other, the video from the other day about that, the application to get your documents off of steel. I made a mistake about the country code you're supposed to put in, but you know, at least I made a correction video and hopefully I I didn't cause anybody any major inconvenience. But anyway, I, 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 was, I started writing a, an article a few days ago. It's up to a page and a half, about the same size as the email I just read you. And I, and I wrote, the header is why I'm giving up on Ecuador. And I'm not going to read this. I'm not going to go through it. I'm not going to really even talk about it because I don't really, I'm not really giving up on Ecuador. Uh, I think I'm just kind of giving up on Monta, really. It's, it's, sometimes I, I just think that Monta is not necessarily for me. That doesn't mean that it won't be perfect for you. There's a lot of expats that live here and they're perfectly happy. A lot of them, folks. Don't, don't get me wrong, please. It's just that it may not be for me. And I think, I honestly think, uh, I, I want to give it more effort. And I want to give it more time. And, and I think that by me uh, making myself more mobile, where I can get out of this apartment and go explore, that's going to be my salvation. So that's, that's pretty much what it's like. Uh, Jeff, I think it was. Is that the name I picked for him? Jeff? I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what some of you others think, you know. Leave, leave some comments in the comment section. And ask all the questions that you want. But don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. And at least not yet. And if I do go somewhere, I, I might go to another city here in Ecuador, you know. But I definitely want to get a car and get mobile and get out and explore and then report it to you, okay? That's what I want to do. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that. I want to say something. I want to address you single male expats that are coming to Ecuador. Please, 
please don't come here and start calling women out of the blue, women expats, and tell them you know Don Shader and, and try to become instant friends. I have, I have, there, there's an expat that came to town recently, a single guy, and I, I personally know of three single expat women that have been approached by him uh, that would, that he was somewhat inappropriate. Guys, don't come here thinking that every single expat woman here wants to be your friend. They, you know, everybody has their own reasons for retiring in Ecuador. And th there's a lot of single expat women that come here. There's a lot of single expat women that live here that are, that became widows after they came here. And they, they don't need, they don't need this pressure from a single expat guy that's coming here looking for a quick relationship. So please, don't, don't come here. I'm telling you guys, don't come here. Don't drop my name and tell women. If you're going to call women right out of the blue on WhatsApp and introduce yourself to them and, and then tell them that you're a friend of me, Don Shader, uh, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. I don't like it. And this individual that did this, I'm going to have a talk with, and it's not going to be tolerated. Okay, you're not, you're you're going to fail miserably here, and you're going to find yourself very lonely. So please don't do that. Okay, and I'm sorry to have to say that and have to bring that up on this channel, but this is an issue that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a pattern with single expat guys coming here. I'm at the point now where I don't want to meet you. If you come here and you want to meet me for coffee, I'm getting to the point where I don't want to meet up with single expat guys anymore because I can tell you some stories about some of the ones that I've met. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not friends with them. I know that that's not exactly the topic of this video, but the phone call that I got a few minutes ago was from uh, an expat friend of mine that called me and wanted to know what in the hell is going on with this guy. So I wanted to address it. That's just all I'm going to say about it. And I hope that this situation works itself out. So anyway, that's it. I thank you for being a subscriber. I thank you for watching my channels. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, Give me a thumbs down, and like I said, go suck an egg, okay? Go find somebody else's channel. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that need you. I'll see you on the next one, okay? Ciao, ciao. I'm not saying it's been a long evening. <laughs> but when I sat down at the desk, I, I didn't need a shave. <laughs>
I was, I was rolling in the aisles. <laughs> Some yo-yo tied my shoestrings together. <laughs> and I, and I might say I've been there, there ever since. I. I was there, I was there, the night he told Billy, Billy Graham he loved his crackers. <laughs> and, the night, and the night he introduced Ed McMahon's wife as Ed McWoman. <laughs> oh, oh. And, and I was there, there the night when he asked Marcello Mastroianni <laughs> if, if innuendo was the Italian name for Preparation H. <laughs> Tonight to Will Willie Shoemaker, the jaw, the jockey. <laughs> I was the night that Willie Shoemaker, the jockey, was was there and told Johnny he weighed only nine, 92 pounds, so soaking wet. You. <laughs> he told him that's what he gets for standing under his horse. 